You know, when it comes to uh, very simple wild foods, people just don't realize the amount of wild edible plants that exist in and around their houses. Uh, you know, there's a lot of plants that grow everywhere in this country in pretty much everyone's yards that have a far higher vitamin and mineral content than the produce that we buy at the store. You know, the produce that we buy nowadays is grown year after year from the same seed stock. And by doing it that way, you know, those, those vegetables lose a lot of their vitamins and minerals. Yet the simple wild edible plants that grow in our yards year after year uh, maintain their high, high vitamin and mineral content. And you know, I always found it kind of funny in many cases, a lot of people spend thousands of dollars a year eradicating weeds from their yard that are far more nutritious than the things that they're buying at the grocery store. So I wanted to take a time to talk about four or five simple plants that grow nearly everywhere in this country that grow in your yard that you can eat on a daily basis to supplement the, uh, the, the vegetables that you're buying from your local store. So today I'm at the Earth Village Education property here in Marshall, Virginia. And I just wanted to take a minute to show you guys a couple of these uh, basic wild edible plants that most likely grow in your yard. Uh, you know, I really want to take care to show you guys plants that grow all over the country. And there are quite a few wild edible plants that grow uh, coast to coast, north to south, east to west. The first one I want to talk about is chickweed. Chickweed is one of my favorite kind of early spring, spring wild edible plants. Uh, you can see it grows in bunches and bunches. It grows low to the ground and it spreads. Uh, a lot of these have these little white flowers on them. Really, really, really tasty wild edible plant, full of vitamin C. Uh, it's got also really high mineral content and a lot of beta carotene. Uh, chickweed can be eaten as is. You know, you can just pluck it from the ground uh, and add it to salads and things like that. Or it can also be cooked. Um, there's also quite a few recipes out there uh, for chickweed pesto, which I'll, I'll highly recommend to you. But yeah, as I said, it, it grows very prolifically. You can see almost this whole hillside here. There's a few other good wild edibles mixed in, but is mostly chickweed. And it is really tasty. It has kind of a, a very succulent, spinachy kind of consistency to it. And it is one of my favorites. Whenever I'm wandering through the woods in the early spring, I'm just picking and eating handfuls of chickweed. So another wild edible I want to talk to you guys about today, another very common one, is garlic mustard. And we've got garlic mustard growing here, here, this patch here, and all over here. Garlic mustard is another fairly common wild edible plant uh, that starts growing up in the early spring. Uh, the reason it's called garlic mustard is because it tastes like garlic mustard. That's the, the best way to describe it. It's got kind of that sweet, spicy flavor. Uh, one thing about this, this wild edible is as uh, in another couple months, as it starts to grow taller, the leaves will get really bitter and not as tasty as they are when they're nice, fresh, new, young growth like this. Another cool thing about this plant is in the late fall when everything dies off, if you get a bit of a warm spell for a couple days, this will actually start to regrow and you can find some nice and tasty new sources of it in those, those warmer uh, late fall periods. But I'll just go around to that wild garlic mustard patch, collect a bunch of those leaves. The leaves I can use as is in a salad. I can eat them right from the ground, uh, or I can also cook them as well. And as I said, it's got a really nice, tasty, garlicky mustard flavor. All right, another really, really common uh, spring edible plant I want to talk about is the wild onion. Uh, wild onions grow in a lot of places and a lot of people's lawns. And you'll notice this time of year, if you look out at your front lawn, you'll see tufts of what look like grasses that are growing in clumps that are taller than, uh, than whatever your species of grass growing is. Uh, they typically grow in bundles. And you'll notice a main difference between the wild onion and your blade of grass is that this has a hollow tube. Now this is called wild onion because it's a member of the onion family and it has all the characteristics that onions do. Kind of gives your, your food that kind of that spicy flavor. So these wild onions, I could dig them up, 
I can eat, I can chop them up raw and add them to salads. I could chop them up and throw them in a pan with some garlic and oil and saute them and cook any number of foods with. They're really easy to harvest. Usually they're growing everywhere. Uh, what I do is I'll take my knife, just really simply stick it in the ground and I just want to pop up that soil and I want to get, get up that root ball because that's what we're after right there is that tasty, tasty root ball. And you'll notice that it looks very much like a small onion that you know that, that you buy in the store. So you know I'd take these home, I'd chop the little root end off, wash them off, peel that outer skin, and then has the most amazing delicate onion flavor. It's not overpowering like a lot of onion is. And this is something you're never, you'll, ne you'll never just find one wild onion or two wild onions growing. You're going to find them everywhere. Just in my field of vision here, I can see hundreds and hundreds of these wild onion plants growing. So I can harvest quite a bit of this and use it for uh, any onion needs I may have uh, in the kitchen. All right, so the next plant I would like to talk about is a plant that pretty much everybody is fami familiar with and that is the dandelion. I think if you ask pretty much anybody anywhere in the world what a dandelion looks like, they could probably identify one for you. It's a very, very common plant. The funny thing is, this is not a native plant to this country. Uh, this was originally brought over by European settlers as a food source because uh, once you get it going, it grows and it, and, it, and it grows and it grows and it grows and it grows everywhere. In fact, a lot of native cultures used to call dandelion uh, and another plant uh, known as plantain, they would call them white man's footprints because any place the natives saw either the dandelion or the plantain plant, they knew that, that white folks had been there. Dandelion is another plant that a lot of people spend a lot of money to rid their yards of when it is so full of vitamins and minerals uh, and it's such an amazing food source. Uh, it's really high in vitamin A and vitamin C. Uh, the dandelion also has a few edible parts. The first is that yellow flower that we're all familiar with. That yellow flower can be plucked off the stalk and eaten raw. It can be battered and deep fried. Dandelion fritter, uh, flower fritters are one of my favorite foods on earth. So that's one food part. Another food part is the leaf. Dandelions typically always kind of have that very jagged leaf structure. These early spring dandelions are so wonderfully tasty. But one thing you got to keep in mind, as dandelion grows through into the summer, if you're not picking it and eating a lot, it, the leaves can become bitter. But in the spring, no bitterness at all, and it's a great salad green. And it can also be cooked as well. Uh, the dandelion also yields yet another food source to us. We can dig up and take that root and we can dry the root and powder it and it was often used as a coffee substitute. If you think in the early you know, 1800s, coffee was a rare commodity and a lot of places would take coffee and mix it with crushed up dandelion root to kind of extend that coffee a little bit. So as I said, full of vitamin A, full of vitamin C, tons and tons of minerals. And it's funny, if you go into some supermarkets, especially like Whole Foods, they'll sell bundles of dandelion greens for, you know, six, seven, eight dollars a pound, which is a ridiculous price considering that you could go and gather pounds of it in your own yard. Last but not least, I want to talk about one of my favorite wild edible plants, and that is the violet. Uh, the first thing that comes to mind when I think of violets and why I love them so much is that you'll notice before on the other wild edible species I was talking about, I mentioned how uh, as we move out of the spring and into the summer, they can get a bit of bitterness to them. You know, the dandelion, the chickweed, and things like that. The beautiful thing about violets is they do not get bitter at all, all throughout the summer. This violet that I'm gonna eat here in a second will taste the same as a violet that I harvest in the middle of August. They just never really get that bitterness like a lot of other wild edibles do. Uh, thing, another thing I really love about the violet is uh, the texture. You know, if you're a, a person who likes spinach, either raw or cooked, has a very similar texture to spinach. spinach. Uh, super high in vitamin A and C. 
Uh, and that, the leaves are just one part of this plant that's edible. The other, the flowers also are very edible as well. Have all those same good vitamins and minerals the leaves do and they make a really nice garnish for a salad. You know, this time of year we could spend a few hours collecting quite a few different plants to eat in a nice wild salad, and then we can go ahead and top that salad off with some violet flowers and some dandelion flowers uh, and make just a really, really beautiful meal that you gathered from the landscape. So yeah, and the, the other cool thing about violets is they grow quite prolifically. You know, this time of year, they're really just starting to come up. You're seeing a patch here and a patch there. In a few short weeks, all of this is going to fill in, and you'll literally get whole hillsides of violets. There'll be more than you can eat. So, yeah, definitely explore and spend some time with, uh, with eating our friends, the violets. They are one of the, the tastiest of tasty wild edible plants that there are. So we spent a little bit of time this afternoon talking about uh, some very basic wild edible plants that grow in and around uh, where we all live. Uh, it's important that I want to offer a bit of a disclaimer. Um, you know, there are tons of different species of plants out there. And yes, some of them can be poisonous. Some of them can be so poisonous, in fact, that they'll kill us if we eat them. While others will just make us really sick. So if you're in, into exploring the area, the areas of wild edible plants, it's important that you do your research. You know, we live in the information age where we have access to the internet and we should have no excuses for checking several sources and absolutely positively identifying what plants we are eating. You know, the goal for eating wild edible plants is to enhance our health not to take our health away from us. So before you eat anything, unless you're absolutely sure what it is you're eating is good, you know, don't eat it. Do your research, buy some books, and learn the plants that grow in and around your house.